All right, let me so show you something else a little bit cool. All right, let's consider a plane. This plane contains the vector AR. Now this AR is a very special vector, okay? Because AR starts at this point A. Now A is a point, we know that point. We have an X, Y, Z for that point, okay? We know its location. Now R follows the, uh, the vectors. Remember we just in a past video rewrote the equation R equals some point plus either lambda or alpha or whatever times b plus then your mu times c or whatever. It, again, the parameters don't matter. Okay, but r represented all the points in the plane that could be reached by following these vectors. Okay, so that's what this r point is. This r point is that magical point that really could be anywhere on this plane. Okay, now we're defining a vector n here. Now, vector n is perpendicular to this plane, which means that no matter where r is, if I were to project it on n, it would end up giving me a 90 degree angle. Remember, we talked about in class um, a couple of times ago uh, how to find the angle between two lines, even if they don't cross. All right, so that's basically what's going on here. We've got a line that's perpendicular to any ar vector in this plane, which means it's perpendicular to the plane. All right, so... What I want to look at here is, let's consider, if this is really perpendicular to n, what does that mean? Well, that means that AR is perpendicular to n. Yep, that's what I just said. That means that AR dot product n equals, mini drum roll, zero. Now, why is that significant? Okay, well, let's go ahead and rewrite AR. Well, AR is going to be the x value of R minus the x value of A, which is the x value of a point. That's why I labeled this one with a 1, because that's a specific point in the plane. The R, remember, is supposed to be able to represent any point in the plane. Okay, then we've got y minus y1, and of course, z minus z1, which is still going to be dot product with the n equals 0. And you're still like, uh, I really don't care. Okay, well, watch this. Let's go a little bit further. Remember the dot product we learned a couple of lessons ago is distributive. So I can rewrite this as xyz dot product n minus x1, y1, z1 dot product n is still equal to z. Wait, 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 I know you don't care yet. But if I add this to the other side, then effectively what I get is xyz dot product n is equal to, because I'm going to add it to the other side, x1, y1, z1 dot product n. And I know you're still like, Minta Bawada. That still doesn't make sense to me. Even if I go ahead and put them back in and I say that that means that r dot product n is equal to a dot product n, you're still looking at this and you're like, okay, Mr. Bawada, so what? So what? And I understand because it took me a while as well to get to the point where I really understood what was going on here and why we even care. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example. This is one of the times that is showing you an example is going to show you why we even care about all of this. All right, so I'm, I'm going to copy that down just right here. So I'm going to go r dot n equals a dot n. And let's look at the example that I've got here. Okay, given that a plane contains the point negative 1, 2, 4 and is perpendicular to such and such vector, write a Cartesian equation for the plane. Now, I know you're already starting to think about, well, I can write the vector equation, I can put the point negative 1, 2, 4 in the vector equation, then I can get a direction. Oh, I don't have a direction. All right, watch this. We can use what we just found out, this. Note that this is given to you in the IB booklet. All right, so you can use this, r dot n equals a dot n. Remember that a is a point in the vector, and n is the vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. 
So R, remember, is x, y, z. Okay? Dot product, the normal vector, which was 1, 2, 3, which will be equal to some point. Remember, A was a real point in the plane. So negative 1, 2, 4, dot product N. Now, how do we find a dot product? Well, you should remember that to get a dot product, we just go x times 1, which is 1x, and then we add y times 2, so 2y, and then we add 3 times z. On the other side, we do negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 4 times 3, which is 12, and so in the end, I get x plus 2y, plus 3z equals 16 minus 1 is 15. And look there at what I have. I have an equation for a plane that is in Cartesian form. So now you can be like, ooh, Mr. Bauer, that's so cool. Ooh, Mr. Bauer, that, you're right, that is kind of neat. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I know that's cool. Anyway, uh, let me show you something else. Check this out you will notice that the coefficients the coefficients of this Cartesian equation 1, 2, 3 just happen to be the vector equation that's perpendicular. Now that is pretty snazzy because that means if I know a vector that's perpendicular to my plane I can write at least the left-hand side of the equation right away because I can just figure out what this is. So from this, I could have just done it this way. I could have just said, well, I know that the left-hand of my equation is going to be x plus 2y plus 3z. Now, how do I get the other value? Well, you can do the dot product if you want. Or you can do simple substitution. I can say, well, if x is negative 1 and y is 2, and z is 4, I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I do in my dot product, which is 1 times negative 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 4. And I'm adding all of them together, and I get 15. Now, if that ain't snazzy, you have to watch some other videos, because I'll show you some other really cool stuff. All right, that's all.